Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. For uh, Friday, December 14th, 2012. All right, we left off with the Pentagon to send uh, Patriot missiles uh, to Turkey along with some troops. Then we have the U.S. military industrial complex moves to wage war on Sirius as an analyst. It says the foreign policy serves Raytheon and other weapons manufacturers to make huge profits in the U.S. continuous wars and now for Syria. So the interviewed person is Mark Mason, a political commentator from San Francisco. He says that the move with the Patriot missiles indicates that the U.S. is attempting to use local, regional, and Middle Eastern conflict as an angle or leverage for expanding the U.S. global empire. Bringing in more armaments is not a means to reduce the conflict and tension in the area. The area needs to be de-escalated in terms of armaments and not more in Turkey. Barack Obama is only a minor manager, a low-level manager of the U.S. foreign policy. This is about making money for Radeon, the corporation that makes the Patriot missile systems. The former deputy director of defense, Barack Obama's own former deputy defense director, was a Radeon lobbyist, so it's about the empire and money for the military-industrial complex. Then we have U.S. missile defense system in Europe will intercept Russian ICBMs. The missile defense system in the U.S. plans to deploy in Europe will be able to intercept Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles deployed in European Russia. This came in a statement at a news briefing in Moscow earlier today by the commander of the Russian Strategic Missile Forces. The U.S. claims that the Euro European anti-missile system will counter Iran's missile threat, but it is only Russia that has the ICBMs in Europe. In this context, we understand that the U.S. anti-missile system will target Russia since their ICBMs and submarine-based ballistic missiles are the backbone of Russia's nuclear containment force. It says here on Friday, the European Union leaders uh, basically pledged to plug the gaps in European's military capabilities and strengthen its arms industry as austerity budgets threaten to damage both the continent's military capabilities and its weapon makers. So, you know, this is what it's about, right? It's about borrowing money. And this article says here, U.S. Congress recently was notified by committee that uh, expenditures that the taxpayers are paying $12 billion per year in order to maintain the war operation. So this is how they get the, uh, you know, they don't care about austerity budgets and stuff like that. It's, uh, they've, they've pillaged it. They've pillaged it. And uh, so this is just going to ramp it up, and then they get the contracts going, and the more they spend... The more contracts they get, the more they can borrow. <laughs> and austerity or not, uh, you know, the people get to work that off. The leaders also pledged at Brussels' summit to try to boost the EU's role in tackling international crises now that the U.S., the international engineered crisis is what they say, should say, now that the U.S. military focus is shifting to Asia. Remember, the pivot to Asia, yet they're going to maintain a strong presence in the Middle East. Uh, creating demand for a bigger EU security presence in Africa and the Mediterranean. Then from today, December 14th, you have Russia claims on verge of new ICBM. They said to have a global range. They're on the verge of a new ICBM, the country's military has revealed. But the development of the latest weapon has come for the first time from the Russian military, although speculation has been doing the rounds. They say this is uh, basically because the U.S. will not pull back from its program from creating such missiles themselves. This is interesting. It says the higher energy provided by liquid fuels gives it more varied and effective methods of countermeasures against global missile, missile defense screens, including space-based elements of those systems. So it's going back to what we were talking about um, as far as the uh, militarization of space. We just covered that recently. The Gulag Amera Pelagio, the U.S. incarceration, surpasses Russia's. So it says, remember when Americans used to mock Russia, uh, or the USSR, for being one of the big gulag prison colonies? Well, it says those were the good old days. One thing is for sure, they no longer hate us for our freedom. On the other hand, so here you go. Here's 100 to uh, 700, uh, 100,000 citizens. Prison populations per 100,000, uh, basically tax slaves is what we are. And it says here, Switzerland's down there below 100. You have Switzerland, France. Germany, Italy, Greece, UK is up there a little higher, Spain, Mexico, uh, Poland, Brazil, but then uh, here you have uh, US and Russia, um, 98, 1998 is the dark blue, then uh, you have 2004, and then 2008 and 9 is the black one, so yeah, they're uh, moving up, moving on up.
But you'll see this type of propaganda uh, in the news, Western news, gulags, mass starvation and torture, and the boy tyrants who's one step closer to nuking the West. They're talking about North Korea, of course, and Kim Jong-un. They said here the launch of the ballistic rocket showed plan to attack America, but state media said the launch is a successful positioning of weather satellite. So the, quote, Shining Sun leader Kim Jong-un has megalomaniac designs on the West. And it's always nice when they talk about that, the isolated country and how they'll torture you if you try to escape, you and your family. Um, it's always to deflect what's actually happening in their own country. I mean, you're being, um, you're being victimized there in the UK and the United States in different ways, but just as much as they are over there. It says EU threatens North Korea with sanctions after rocket launch. Uh, this in the previous article from December 12th, 2012. I'm not really sure what else they're going to do. Is put more sanctions on them? It says a North Korean satellite tumbling out of control. And this is from uh, the 12th as well. So they were trying to downplay it. Actually, the timeline, the way it went, was that they were building it up like it's going to be a nuclear holocaust. Uh, and uh, and then they said, oh, it's tumbling out and it didn't even make it. It's tumbling out of control. I remember this article from the 13th. Obama should have shot down North Korea's missile. So God forbid if anybody else besides the United States uh, try to... Uh, shoot something off. They said it appeared to be an intercontinental ballistic missile. I'm not really sure if that's true. As Michael Maza writes for the Diplomat, I don't, and he says striking now would have shaken the confidence in Kim Jong Un and undermined what is perhaps the regime's greatest myth that it is powerful and feared abroad. Now that myth has been reinforced, he says yes, shooting down the missile would have been provocative, but no more so than North Korea's decision to launch. So, again, this is complete bullshit. Um, like I said, the United States just uh, actually fired off and tested their own nuclear weapons in Nevada just, a, a, what, a week ago or something like that. And um, everything that the United States does uh, in uh, unison with South Korea is provoking. It's provoking North Korea. And for the most part, they haven't done a damn thing. Yeah, maybe a little bit of talk, but I just, you know, when I read in these Yahoo comment boards... Um, it just it's just really a sad state of affairs how how um how much um, uh, people have not evolved right they have not evolved and i mean mostly just mentally and spiritually and i don't mean that that they uh, need to be more intelligent they just need to be more skeptical about things about what they read and actually think for themselves and not just regurgitate what they've read from these little press releases for north korea the next step is a nuclear test so says here that North Korea's next step after rattling the world by putting a satellite into orbit for the first time will likely be a nuclear test. So I love this, though, because the country doesn't allow all the propaganda to come into their country and their, and their culture to be um, uh, corrupted. They're reclusive. And because they're not an occupied state by Zionists and globalists, they're unpredictable. And since people didn't uh, get so scared that they asked their government to, to carry out a strike, a preemptive strike, North Korea still years away from reliable missiles from the 13th. I noticed this, that they started watering it down and downplaying it after all the hyping up. Oh, there's no big deal, right? They said that um, uh, it did not gain attention in the outrage of world leaders Wednesday uh, with its first successful launch. So you, if you read these comments, um, to me, when I, when I read these comments, I'm not reading, I'm reading programming, right? I'm reading people that don't think for themselves. I'm reading program. The UN will write you a letter because they want to, okay, well, something must be done, remember? Uh, the UN will write a letter telling them how angry they are enough so they want the United Nations to start having more power over their sovereignty, national sovereignty. Uh, China will ter tell everyone to restrain themselves, and North Korea will be busily preparing its nuclear tests like they uh, like they are in um, in Syria with chemical weapons and in Iraq. The reply was too bad Americans turn to jelly and become nothing but yellow belly cowards. A, a country that's never done anything to Americans yet this a hole can make a comment like that. Such a, such ignorance. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I want to see these douchebags go on the front lines and join the Marine Corps and go start killing people for nothing. You know, so even though they say that. Uh, that uh, they're downplaying it. it says how accurate does a nuclear missile have to be even when it's 300 miles off it's still problematic today or tomorrow stop them now says michael so again this is like you know 
same double standard of uh, us having all these nuclear arsenals, the most in the world, um, and basically enslaving the world at the same time and uh, killing mostly civilians, mostly women and children with drone strikes and bombs and stuff like that and deforming their uh, the future for them uh, because they don't bend to their will, right? So North Korea is one of those countries like Syria that doesn't bend to the, to the globalist will. Merely having a president with the balls to attack other countries like North Korea acts as a better deterrent like a bush than all political sanctions in the world placed upon them. So again, like Iran, the sanctions only, uh, they only hurt the people that really don't have any, any say over anything. You know, you're just going to starve those people. But then they'll say, oh, look at Kim Jong-un. He's living high off the fat of the land. His people are starving, right? The UN Security Council is useless. <laughs> Here you go. Zero U.S. money should go there. Actually, they're uh, stealing their wealth. They're stealing the possibility for them to uh, to trade and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, we used to be the toughest guy in the block, the biggest bully, right? The empire. I love how people said, like, love that, that the U.S. is supposed to be this big empire. And, uh, and now we pay extortion money to piss and countries that you're also paying to, uh, to fund uh, forced abortions, too, there, buddy. Okay, I'll finish here. It says, actually, we're still at war. There's there's uh, never an armistice sign. Maybe it's time to go finish the job. Okay there, Jimbo, you go do it. You you lead the you lead the charge. U.S. hesitant in condemning North Korean launch. said the Obama regime is drawing no red line from North Korea, Korea after a successful launch. Long-range rocket test tempering the public condemnation to avoid raising tensions or possibly rewarding the reclusive communist nation with too much time in the global spotlight. They said that they won't tolerate Iran's acquisition of nuclear weapons and Syria's use of chemical stockpiles on rebels. What? <laughs> They're trading the rebels to use them against the Syrian people and government. Uh, Jesus. North Korea, in some ways, is a trickier case. They want, they want to forcefully condemn what he believes is a highly provocative act. But it also wants to be mindful of the turmoil in the Korean Peninsula. Which is basically they divided up the Korean the Koreans north and south because when they couldn't defeat them all they have to divide them that's their strategy to divide and conquer. But just seeing the videos, uh, some just limited information on North Korea, you're never going to break those people, man. Just ain't going to happen because they're not as brainwashed. And you can say, oh yeah, they are brainwashed. Look at them. Uh, they all have the, they have their own brainwashing, right? And uh, United States and quote democratic free nations, you have your brainwashing too. The only difference is that you support an evil empire uh, that goes around uh, uh, killing any national state, whereas they're brainwashed uh, to be what? To at least uh, know that the outsiders are trying to uh, uh, subvert them and enslave them and turn them into consumerist whores. North Korea fired a rocket, so what? So it says here, Simon Jenkins thinks we have nothing to fear but overreaction itself. So a pretty interesting article at the Guardian. Whoever this Simon Jenkins is, these comments prove that he is a, not a defense analyst or policy maker. If I remember correctly, they've had nuclear weapons since 2008. This story is annoying, so yeah, people don't like to hear that. But for what it's worth, Kim Jong-un in North Korea is going to continue the rocket launches. It says here that uh, satellite launches should continue for further development of the country's science or scientific, technical, and economic development. He just could, could just say security, too, for the country. And you go to press TV, it's completely uh, uh, opposite of comments. Why do this, the U.S. and West hate North Korea? I don't understand. They're highly conscientious people. By God, world uh, should learn from them, from the North, and how not to bow before the bullies. My best wishes to Kim. So, interestingly enough, you have uh, Kim Jong-un voted Times Person of the Year by readers. Let's not forget last month, the youngin named Kim 2012 Sexiest Man Alive. There's speculation that uh, North Korea launched a new EMP-capable star system or Star Wars weapon system. I guess only time will tell. We have Japan sending out fighter jets after a China air breach. Japan scrambled eight fighter jets on Thursday after a Chinese state-owned plane breached its airspace for the first time. Japan says they may use a long-range radar aircraft over disputed islands. Let's not forget, from September, China prepares for a possible war with Japan, telling their people to be ready. Georgia or Russia to hold first face-to-face -face talks after war. And look at this. This is real democracy, right? Ukraine parliament fistfight. A giant brawl erupts between lawmakers. An article that was pulled by the BBC, a Ukrainian reporter is held hostage by what? By the rebels. 
That's why. Kyrgyzstan warns this country might become the new Afghanistan and there's bread and circuses in Turkmenistan. There's a new, there's a new great game in Central Asia between Russia and NATO. Thank you.